excited to bring up Loretta Whitesides to talk about what is your mission, fulfilling what you came to Earth to do. Hmm, where did I come from? Sometimes I feel like I came from Mars. I don't know, or Venus. But yes, so she's going to get up here and she's from Virgin Galactic. By the year 2006, I had um, had two technical degrees from prestigious universities. I had already floated weightless 80 times on Zero Gravity Corporation's 727 weightless trainer aircraft as a crew member. I'd already um, been featured in a documentary 3D IMAX by James Cameron about our dives to the hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the seafloor. Um, and I married the man of my dreams. And yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> and, um, and had gotten a, my ticket to fly to space on Virgin Galactic. So by all external metrics of success, I'd nailed it, right? But the problem was that what I didn't anticipate is that all the achievements and success didn't guarantee happiness, like Lauren was talking about earlier. So um, what I began to realize is that I could keep having, you know, I could have all the achievements in the world or in the universe, and it wouldn't make up for the fact that some days I didn't like myself, or I didn't feel like I could be fully who I am out in the world, or that I didn't feel like I was making the difference that I came to this planet to make. And so I took a step back and I decided to redefine what success meant for me. And I created a definition, that by the end of my life, what I actually wanted to achieve was that I wanted to have there be no distance between who I am and how I'm known out in the world. It's not like I get home and I'm like, oh, thank God, I'm done with all that. I can be myself now. And I also wanted to have my life be about me fully fulfilling on what I came here to do. So what I, I call people who are living their dream, living what they came to Earth to do, people who are living mission-driven lives. And so my mission on this planet, well, and off, is to start a movement of people living mission-driven lives. So many of you probably work or are involved with companies that are working on being mission-driven companies. Well, I want us to be mission-driven people. So I find in my culture, at least, a lot of us are very career-driven, and it's about success and achievement. And I really want us to start to think about being mission-oriented people. So like, what is your mission? You know, and there's little things we could do to start to shift this, right? Like, we could even change the way that we talk. Like, instead, stop asking kids what they want to be when they grow up. You know, start asking them, what's the contribution you want to make to the world? And of course, if we start talking to them like that, then we're going to have to be better role models, right? We're going to have to start doing that and role modeling for them what it looks like to be people who are being mission-driven in our lives. So now I'll ask you guys the question, what is your mission? You know, what is it that makes your heart sing? What is it that you're totally called to do that you would do even if nobody paid you? That's just your passion. And so, actually, I actually really want to ask you this. So, raise your hands. How many of you guys are a little unsure? Like, you're not sure yet what you're here on Earth to do. You maybe aren't, don't know what your mission is. You don't know what you're... Okay, good. Thank you. And how many of you guys feel like you could articulate it? You actually do know what you're here to do. You're like, I got my mission. Okay, awesome. And, how, and of those, how many of you feel like you're doing it? Like your life is fully devoted to that? Oh, fantastic. Okay, cool. Thank you, guys. Um, so there's three things that I want to give you guys today about living a mission-driven life. So the first is tell the truth. So tell the, it starts with telling the truth to yourself. So when I was doing my graduate work at Caltech, my PhD advisor said to me, you know, Loretta, it really looks like you seem to really enjoy doing the space advocacy projects. You seem to really be thriving at that. You know, have you considered that maybe that, that's what you should be doing in the world? And I was like, no, Diane, no, no, I'm, I'm finished. I'm going to stay this out. I could do this. I'm going to finish this PhD. I'm going to graduate. I'm going to make this happen. And, um, you know, it took me about a year to get honest with myself and to tell the truth to myself that, you know, my calling wasn't in research biology, that really my passion was about connecting with people and making a difference for humans. So tell the truth. Number two, um, give yourself permission. 
So the first thing that c comes up for people when I say, okay, go do your mission, I was like, well, who am I to do my mission? You know, I don't have the training. I don't know where to start. I'm kind of busy. Um, you know, I, there's certainly other people in the world who are in a better position to do this than I am. You know, I'm an introvert. You know, I don't know, you know, I don't know what, what to do. And in reality, like, um, you know, there's no one else in the world who could do what you're here to do, you know. If you don't, you know, if you're not, if you don't do it, it won't get done. So you gotta give yourself permission to, to do your mission. And turn your excuses into reasons. So I do have enough time. I do know how to do this. I am the best position in the world to make this difference. Introverts are awesome leaders. Like, I'll figure this out. Because in reality, the only um, qualifications you need to fulfill your mission is you being willing to say, that you are qualified to fulfill your mission. The rest you can learn on the job. Third, um, take steps. So you gotta, you gotta take action. The, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So you gotta get out there and start taking action. Go find a coach. Get a circle of people around you who will hold you accountable for your vision and your dreams. And say, okay, what have you, have, what have you done this month? You know, let's check in. What did you say you were gonna do? What did you do? Um, find people who believe in your, in your mission and it'll help you build the website or help introduce you to the people that you need to meet to make it happen. Um, and, and take action, start writing. You know, write, you know, get your ideas down, get them out there. I, I, for a year, I woke up every morning an hour before my kids so that I could write the book that I'd been saying I wanted to write for 10 years. You gotta just, you know, whatever your dream is, take small steps, do it now. You know, you might say it's so late, you know, but a year from now, it's only gonna be a year later, so you might as well start now. Um, ask for help. You, you know, if you wanna do big things, if you wanna have an impact in the world, you're gonna have to get comfortable asking for help. We only have a limited amount of things, impact we can make as, a, as this individual person. But when you start building teams, you start amplifying the impact you can have in the world. You have to start asking people for help. People are gonna wanna help you. People are gonna wanna be a part of what you're doing. It's so exciting. You're so exciting. Your vision is so exciting. Um, there's a book called uh, Bold by Peter Diamandis, and there's a great quote in there that it takes about the same amount of effort to double the size of your project as it does to, to, make, it, to make it 100 times bigger. So if you're gonna put the effort in, go big. Make your impact 100 times greater in the world. Um, dream big, think big, be bold. Because at some point, it's gonna become time for your last breath. And when you get there, I want you to be able to go, wow, what a ride. I gave it everything I had and it was awesome. So your assignment over the lunch break that we're about to have is to start telling the truth to each other. Start talking about what your mission is. Start helping each other figure out what your mission is. Because imagine if all of us, we are a pretty powerful, extraordinary group of intelligent, well-trained, well-connected people in here. If we were all fulfilling what we came here to do, imagine what kind of world that would be. I would sleep better at night. I wouldn't have to worry about climate change anymore. We have girls going in engineering all the time. It would be fantastic. Um, so go out and help each other you know, articulate what your mission is. Help them figure out what their next steps are. And take, so you guys can all start taking those small steps. Because to paraphrase Apollo Moonwalker, Neil Armstrong, that will be one small step for a woman and one giant leap for humankind. Thank you.